Okay, so one of the things we deal with in lab is making measurements. And then along with those measurements, we need to calculate something. So I'm just going to skip a lot of the stuff and just do something. So let's say that I want to calculate the area of this rectangle. I'm just going to make up some numbers. Okay. So <clears throat> I can't measure the area. I have to measure the length and the width and then use that to calculate the area. So let's say I have the length and I have the width and I get the length. I'm completely making up numbers here. Let's say it's about, let's say, 12.5 centimeters and the width is um, 20.2 centimeters. Now that's not the answer. I can't do that. If I measure that length right there and I get 12.5, it's kind of like um, trying to get one value for something that's kind of fuzzy, right? Because if I measure the length of that thing along here, I might get different values. Or the measurement tool may not be perfect. There's all these things that come into the play that say, I, I can't just say 12.5 and boom, that's it. I have to do something. And that's where the uncertainty comes in. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to get, let's say the uncertainty is, say it's 12.5 uh, plus or minus 0.5 centimeters. I just made that up. Okay, we'll talk about where to get that number later. But really, it's just an estimate based on my measurement, if I make one measurement. And let's say this one is, uh, 20 plus 20.2 plus or minus um, let's make this 20 plus or minus one centimeter okay uh, one of the things is if this is 20.2 plus or minus one if the uncertainty is that big it makes it's kind of dumb to say the uncertainty the measurement sound of 20.2 but I mean it doesn't really matter okay so this is the crank three times method for calculating uncertainty Okay, so the first thing is crank number one, I'm going to calculate the area. Area is length times width. So it's just going to be 12.5 centimeters times 20 centimeters. And that is going to be, um, let me just put that in my quick calculator over here, even though you could do that in your head. I just don't want to make mistakes because when you're on a video, you can make mistakes. Trust me, it happens all the time. Okay, so I have 12.5. 20. So 250 centimeters squared. The units do matter, right? This is centimeters times centimeters, I get centimeters squared. So that's the area. Now I'm going to crank it again. Crank number two, I'm going to find the minimum area. Since this has some range of values and that has some range of values, I could pick the range such that I get the smallest area possible. So like here's the width it's between there and there, I'm not really sure. And then here's the length between here and there. So my minimum area would be like this, that size. I wanna calculate that. So that's gonna be, in this case, I'm gonna use the minimum width. So it's gonna be 19 centimeters. And the minimum length, that's gonna be 12 centimeters. So that's gonna be 228 centimeters squared. Now the third crank, I'm going to calculate the maximum. So it's the same thing. I'm going to have 13 centimeters because that's 12.5 plus 0.5. So the maximum I would get would be 13 and the maximum here would be 21. So 273. Okay, so now I want to get, I want to report the area with uncertainty. So here's my area, but what am I going to get for the uncertainty? So this might be further from the average than this. So what I do is actually average this max and min. So I'm going to have uh, delta A is the uncertainty. It's going to be A max minus A min over 2. So that's the average deviation of these two from that, essentially. Okay, so if I put that in my calculator, I get 273 minus 228 divided by 2. So I get 22.5 centimeters squared. 
So now if I go back over here, I would report the area as 250 plus or minus 22.5 centimeters squared. Okay, now really, again, we get back to this. If I know the uncertainty that well, then how do I know uh, this? Um, maybe this should only be one digit or something like that. There's lots of rules over there. I don't really care about those too much. I care that this has a value and that there's an uncertainty and where and that comes from some logical place. That's the most important thing. Now there is one problem. Okay, let me show you another example. Suppose I'm going to calculate the density. Density is mass divided by volume. You can't just directly count, measure the volume. I mean the, well maybe not even the volume. Maybe you don't directly measure the density, but I measure the mass and the volume. So when I do my crank three times, I have mass, I have volume, I can calculate the density. For two, if I want to calculate the minimum density, that would be the minimum mass divided by the maximum volume. Because I want the smallest this can be. Since I have volume on the bottom, and since I'm dividing by volume, a bigger volume is divided by would give me a smaller density. If you do minimum mass divided by minimum volume, you kind of cancel those things out. Okay, so you don't want to do put in the minimum values. You put in whatever needs to be in there to get the minimum. And then the maximum density would be the maximum mass divided by the minimum volume. Okay. And sometimes you don't even know what to put in there. Sometimes let's say I have um, Tx equals T cosine theta. Do I put in the maximum or minimum theta right here? To get this you don't know it depends on what theta is because this function goes up and down so in that case you could just try different values you can just play with it there's other ways but that's that's the way that I'll have, have you do it okay so that's how to calculate uh, a value with uncertainty